captured by women. An all-women host show which tackles and examines critical trending issues from the perspective of the women. I am Elizabeth Olympio Emmanuel, and I'm joined today by Matilda Abahins. Now here's a recap of our show from last week. And who were the uh, entities in this new indigenous 51% holding? There were entities, none of which had any expertise in power distribution. Yes. Cobbled together about overnight. Five, yeah, about five. Cobbled together overnight. Mm. Is it surprising that we didn't do due diligence? Whose and we have time. would it have been to do the due diligence? First and foremost is the Minister of Finance. Mm. The Minister of Finance is the shareholder of ECG on behalf of the good people of Ghana. All right. The Minister of Finance signed the compact on behalf of the Minister of Ghana. So first and foremost, the Minister of Finance should be held responsible for this, for the damage to our international reputation. Mm. Secondly, there's a sectoral minister who oversees the sector. ECG falls under the sector. He brought this to parliament and he assured parliament that the documentation will be made available. Mm. So he should have responsibility. MIDA, the statutory body we set up purely for this, under the office of the president. Mm. What were they doing? No. In this episode, there are calls for an independent investigation into the discovery of the human remains in Takaradi. Exactly one year ago since the girls in Takaradi were reported missing, a lot of efforts have gone into tracing their whereabouts, but to no avail. The trail had gone cold for some time, but the discovery of some human remains in the residence of the key suspect, now in police custody, has resurrected the conversation on the missing girls. The experts will help us unlock this mystery. Also, we'll be looking at tracking apps to the rescue of kidnapped children. We are in an era where the everyday conversation now is all about kidnapping. Parents feel insecure because they are thinking about their children, their whereabouts, and what their movements are like. We will tell you about available apps that can be employed. Government has started demolishing structures in and around the Ridge Enclave. The exercise which began on Wednesday is to pave way for the construction of the National Cathedral. The area is housing some nine Court of Appeal judges whose residence is located in the area will be pulled down. We will discuss the mixed reactions that have greeted this decision right here. The spin is up next when we return from the break. Welcome back from the break. This is Captured by Women. After the hue and cry about the construction of the National Cathedral, it is becoming apparent that the project will come off. On Wednesday, the government contractors started pulling down structures around the Accra Ridge Arena, which includes the residences of nine appeal court judges. Matilda, apparently there are about 50 structures that will be going down. I think I saw in the lists the College of Physicians and Surgeons, Kofi Annan ICT. The passport office, Greater Accra Regional Minister's um, residence. Residence. Um, you'd also be looking at the Ghana Maritime Authority's building. These are huge structures. With huge installations. I, I, I shudder to think about the damage that some of these installations could come, moving them could come with because they might have very sensitive equipment in there. Um, what preparations have we made yeah. um, to look at that? Then again, moving them away from these places, what provision, wouldn't this uh, finances that, or funds that we are picking up to, you know, relocate them have been used rather to get land somewhere else for us to construct the cathedral. These are some of the questions that um, 
There's, it's a landmark you, you keep... area. There are a lot of buildings that have been there. Some of them have not reached their um, expiry, let me put it that some, way. Some were actually the, built less than 10 years ago. Five, the judge's what? residence were built five, five years, years ago. ago. This investment, I'm sure, was paid by taxpayers' money. And what's the justification of building a 5,000-seater national cathedral when um, there are private churches that sit up to 15,000 um, church members? It's, I think this national cathedral should have been placed, located somewhere else on bare land where there wouldn't have been the cost implication of demolition and carting away existing useful buildings. How long will the demolition process take? There are so many more questions than answers. You know, it's, it's, it's also become quite a, a touchy issue because once you speak about it, it's as though you were not a Christian. But I, I ask if we had, you know, built the cathedral on another um, land and not where it is going to be located now, how many more jobs would we have created? How open would those places be? Because, you know, if it's in a place where it's not so much open, yeah. then it means that you have people who would want to travel to go to that place, not just even traveling, but economic activity economic will be activity. created for somewhere else, somewhere new. I think in Abidjan, in Cote d'Ivoire, they have built the basilica. the basilica. In Yamoussoukro, mm -hmm. they took it away from the city, so it created uh, economic activity for somewhere new, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that has helped the development of uh, La Cote d'Ivoire. Um, I don't know, I, I'm not too certain, but I think it's a real cost implication to put down heritage buildings in a prime area as this is. The um, circulation of transportation, people's movement, that's a huge edifice. How many years will it take to complete? These are questions that the communication uh, information ministry should be churning out information on a daily basis. We know this is a, a wish from the presidency and we do respect it, but I think um, when the populace, the citizenry, have questions, answers must be forthcoming. It's, I hope the College of Physicians and Surgeons is not included, but the fact that the residences of these nine court judges, uh, appeal court judges, that was built barely five years ago, it's possible there are more structures, new structures fairly uh, in, in this uh, bracket for demolition. Well, we look forward to um, have a lot more information on these because uh, you, you, you just look at it and you, you, you have a lot more answers, uh, questions than answers. And that kind of puts the taxpayer's mind in disarray because you, you, you are asking, is, is this, it's, is it a what priority? more do we need? So Kolebu needs their, the, 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 the pediatrics ward, uh, there are children there on the ward that can't afford simple care for Simple diseases. You have, you have schools that schools you need to complete. To complete. We are on double track in the second year. No, I think we need to speak a little more about this. I'm, I'm, in my, my personal opinion, I think it's the wrong location. It could have been located somewhere else. And uh, 50 structures to go down. Mm. <laughs> well, I, I would love for it to be outside uh, the... Uh, central business area. Yes. Yes. Chopoli, you Pram know, Pram. We can you, go, you out go there. there, enjoy fresh air, beautiful, beautiful scenery. Uh, no pollution. No pollution. <laughs> and God relax. Is <laughs> and relax. Perhaps have a lot of uh, hostels or hotels built around it by the uh, private yes, sector. Yes, yes. So that it's you get each late. Trees. It's not you, too you, late. you can take it as a, a pilgrimage, for instance. You are in, in Ghana, yeah, but you, you are right. going somewhere to go and just pray and, you know. Because naturally, once that is being built, all the other businesses will flow towards that. Hotels, restaurants, hostels, schools, hospitals, they'll all come into the picture. Ah, well. The decision is not ours. We can only state our opinion and hope we are heard. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next on Captured by Women, we look at the discovery of human remains in the case of the missing girls.
Welcome back. It's been 12 solid months since the Tadi girls were reported missing. The trail had gone cold until a few days ago, some skeletal remains were found in the key suspect's apartment. Since then, the conversation has been resurrected. Today, we have the former CID boss, um, COP Bright Odro, also Dr. Richmond Afuakwa, Department of Forensic Science, University of Cape Coast, in here to discuss what has been found, where the process is going, and what can be done. Welcome back. Okay. okay. So, let's go to 12 months. Did we start with the right process? That is from the Western region when it was first reported, the cases were first reported till now, briefly. What would be the normal processes for us to have gone through? Uh, thank you. Um, for me, it's the, the initial report matters. In the, from what we have all heard, the, the, the family, I think the first girl that was kidnapped, it's about 12 months ago, about a year now. And uh, it was reported to police that the lady had been abducted or kidnapped. And there was some conversation between the, the father and the, the abductors or the kidnappers, and of course the lady herself. And so initially it was thought that the ladies had been kidnapped. And so the police started looking into a case of kidnapping. And I think that is why um, all along kidnap, 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 even though um, there was so much, I, think, I, I should say, delay in finding the girls. The, 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 the police could not find the girls, and they the, the, the kept on saying it was kidnapped, kidnapped. Some of us spoke on certain platforms, and then we said time had passed. There is no sign that uh, there is no indication where these girls are, even though we had been assured that, of course, the girls were somewhere and they were safe. But then we were, police were not making progress. So some of us even thought that, well, the, it may not be kidnapping case. It may be a, diff a, case, a different case altogether. It could be abduction for a certain purpose, or it could even be human trafficking. So the police should open up to set other perspectives. They, they, should, they shouldn't only be concerned with investigating kidnap, kidnap case. But I think that is what the police started doing, which um, did not yield dividends. A lot of the citizenry have lost faith in how the manner in which the police have handled the investigation so far. They have been calls for an independent investigation. Is that a possibility? Is it possible to run an independent investigation parallel to the police? Well, uh, Dr. For, yes, uh, currently it's, it's, it's difficult for us to have an independent uh, examination of this case. The reason is that uh, the remains have not been identified. And so far as they haven't been identified, you cannot associate them with any Ghanaian family, which, which will then have some sort of uh, authority over the remains. So the authority now resides in the bosom of government. And in this case, uh, the public institution required for this examination is the Ghana Police Service. Ghana Police, which yes. will be the Forensics Department. Exactly. So, we well, the CID. CID. Let's, let's say the CID. Uh, so, calling for an independent examination now is premature. We, we will have to allow the police to finish the, the, the investigation. How long Associ would it usually take for, for the bones to be identified, the physical examination and uh, you mentioned that it needs to be marked to a Ghanaian body. Family. So, family, yes. How long will this kind of, uh, what time frame? It, it will be difficult to associate any time frame to this because, uh, you know, in the forensic lab, routinely you will do paternity testing and uh, you would expect that they will have the reagents for such uh, uh, DNA testing. There is no routine uh, extraction of DNA from bones. So you won't expect them to have the reagents sitting on a shelf, waiting for bones to come to the lab. These reagents have very short shelf lives, and they are very expensive, and nobody would invest in something like that to keep for it to expire. So I'm sure now that this case has come, the police will have to 
uh, gather, put your house in order, get the required reagents for this, which will take yes. time. We have a collaboration with the West African states and African states. There must be some police force of some other states that has this reagent in their labs. So Can't the we collaborate? The reagents, the reagents are available on the market. Okay. You don't even need such collaborations to get a reagent. Right. They are available on the market. So in a day we can get that reagent no. for that? No. Not in a day. Okay. DHL. <laughs> but, but, the, the, the family okay, needs no, no, answers. No, There's no urgency. Yeah. They don't see the sense of urgency. We are looking at two things here. You have the pathologists playing a part and yeah. then the forensics. the forensics. So how would the two, if you could differentiate between the two and how these two would help in rapidly unraveling the, the, let me, the case? Let me add on to what uh, Doc said. Uh, you know, the DNA identification, I think, is one of the processes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the bones have been found, and I believe that there should be direct physical identification as well. Yeah. Now we are people are saying these are the girls, others are saying these are not the girls. We have the denture. I'm sure the yeah. family should be able to, by just looking at the skull, they should be able to tell whether this is my girl or that is not my girl. The hair, I'm sure they also got some hair. And uh, that identification can be done, because if the, at the time the girl vanished, she had this kind of hair make or hairstyle. I don't think the hairs will vanish or, 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 or dissolve with time. I don't the think abductors so. could have shaved her. Well, but let I believe the police would invite the family and they should be bold enough to go in there and try to see what items were guarded at the crime scene, apart from the skeletal remains. I'm sure there are other things like it. We'll in 12 about. months, do you think the crime scene would not have been contaminated by now? I, this particular one, I don't think, because if they had, had been contaminated, the skeletal remains would have been seen long ago. Which because is they the, were, they were the former in, cemetery? You know, I mean, the, 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 the cesspit or the, yeah. The, the, yeah, the septic, septic tank, tank. Yeah, the manhole. Okay. If, if it had been contaminated, somebody would have seen and then... Well, the, scene, know, the yeah. scene itself might, might have seen some contamination, yeah. but it doesn't take away the fact that the evidence might still be there. Mm -hmm. You know, the evidence, yes. the evidence for the crime the scene, uh, the crime scene always speaks for itself. Was it an abandoned septic tank? Because we all know that septic tank contains some caustic yeah. material nature that can disintegrate any material within it in a period of time. Babies are dropped in septic tanks by mothers who abandon them and they burn up. Of course. Yeah. This, this, so this, explains, 12 months. Yeah. this explains the rapid uh, uh, putrefaction mm -hmm. process. Uh, we, we know that the Police says they got only bones. They got bones. Not yes. flesh, not muscles, but bones. Yeah. Meaning that and some braids. I think they got yeah, some they hair got some as braids. well. The decomposition yes. process yes. has been very rapid. Yeah. Ordinarily, you won't get uh, such rapid decomposition. But the nature of where the bodies were dumped is what possibly is accounting for so, that rapid decomposition. So in this case, if you are reconstructing the crime scene, how would forensics help to rapidly um, go into the details. So, so now the, the septic tank is a scene. Possibly the house itself is a scene. So you go to the house and then you, you can tell. I, I don't know what materials are in the house at the moment, but you could tell, for, for example, how long uh, somebody has been in the house. You could tell from the doors, the windows, if somebody leaves there, the person cleans there. You could tell from uh, which footwear or footprints you have on the floor. Yeah. You could also tell if there has been some blood spatter on the, in the house and somebody has tried cleaning them. Yeah. You, a lot, a lot of things. Does it take a long time to, to do this? Because I, 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 I'm looking at um, the pathologist doing his work plus the forensic experts also doing some the, the, work the, so that the, we can quickly move because the pathologist can also be a forensic expert of course mm. same, yeah. in this so, in this particular yeah. instance yeah. this it's, type of pathology it, is actually it, forensic, forensic pathology because forensic okay. is just application of science yes. mm. so a pathologist can be a mm. forensic expert and, for, and for now mm -hmm. the police pathologist i'm sure is working on the bones now yeah. And there's an expert coming from Kumasi, reportedly not, from... I am not aware of that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of any other 
pathology is coming from Kumasi. Is this to say that since Udotek, the suspect, was arrested close to a year ago, and he's, he, he jumped bail two, two weeks after he was arrested. He, he escaped. He jumping. escaped. <laughs> he escaped. He was rearrested. Is this to say in all of this, the police never, within the first days of his arrest, visited his abode? They did not inspect it till 12 months later? No material, no, no am, am, evidence was very, collected at his sure, residence. I'm very sure that the residence was visited. Yeah. But and the septic tank was missed. Of course. of course, this is a case of kidnapping. kidnapping. In a case of kidnapping, you don't go looking for dead bodies. You go looking for material evidence that will lead you to where the kidnappers, the kidnappers yeah. are keeping the victims. So you won't go looking uh, for dead bodies or mortar remains. But or wouldn't you like possibly that? also be looking for maybe possibility of blood stains that have been cleaned or something so that you, you know? That is, that is where. That is where the criminal investigation process would have to be expanded to include crime scene investigation. So did we over-rely on the suspect well, the, at this point? The, the suspect was arrested and definitely his home would be searched yes. after that one mm -hmm. had been But Was probably, it done? Probably, yes. Probably you would not expect to see anything if they were a criminal like that. And so, but nobody thought that they were dead at the time, as Dr. was explaining. If they were dead at the time, if they thought that something was amiss, they were dead, I'm sure they would have extended the, the scope of the investigation. Uh, and even if they could have been alive, it could have been a septic tank that wasn't filled with uh, material uh, as an excreta. It could have been a dried one where they had put in levels to hide the people or hide the girls or in the ceiling and hide them. A thorough search. I think, frankly, the police failed us in this investigation. How, do, do we have um, the, what kind of training would the person who is not at the head office or the regional command have? Because we've had questions as to how uh, the, the, in the initial case, when it was um, reported, the response of the officers that were in charge was quite questionable because they thought, okay, it, it, it's not a big deal. Because uh, the, f the focus was kidnapping. Uh, we are not holding, I don't think we are holding the brief for the police. For the police. <laughs> they, they had a telephone <laughs> conversation see, back see, and forth. There was yeah. messages, there were between, phone calls. The At that point, between yes, the between the, and the parents. Exactly. And Indicating, the police were aware of this. Yes. that the girls were alive. alive. So why didn't the police then go to the court and issue MTN or whichever telco was to have a trace of where the, tele <laughs> the communication <laughs> was going from? Now you are, you are that, diving, that, that, diving into a different yeah, No, but it's all part of the investigation. Part of the initial investigation. I also remarked on this. Yes. That uh, if I didn't know that the, 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 the family or the, the father of one of the girls had already come to police and the conversation was at the police, yeah. I didn't know that. But I said that the family or the father should have told the police so that at least they could have located the And area that is the, the police's job. From. Yes. But so how I'm long, uh, okay. COP, please, how long did it take for, sorry I'm asking a question, but how no. long did it take <laughs> for the police to arrest the the, sus the first suspect. I'm uh, not sure it took too long. Uh, yeah. It, it, it didn't was, take too long. It, then it, it was then just he within escaped. some hours. Yeah. Uh, uh, a day or two. Not, not the same day. day. It day took a couple of yes. So that means also. that the police did quite well. a good job arresting a suspect a but day or two after. But following his leads, I think we over relied on him. That one is a possibility. And I've always maintained that. that because for, for the police to come out to say that uh, they knew where the girls were, and that uh, sooner or later they would be reunited with the family and all that. I'm sure they relied on the suspects. Leads. Yeah. And, leads. and uh, one thing that we should have been very careful about, or the police should have been very careful and more serious about, was that it, the suspects will not just give, give in like that. Because they may try to mislead you, and it is up to you to also verify whatever whatever information, information they have that you get from the suspect. Does this then justify calls for the director of um, CID to resign? There's a lot of pressure on her to resign because of some statements she made reassuring the family that the girls have been located are safe and will be reunited with their families. Provided that we are sure that the girls or the bones that we have found are the girls' bones. 
But if it turns out that these bones are not the girls... No, but at the time that this statement was made, it was, the impression was the girls are well, alive and safe maybe in still, a place. Maybe still they are well yes, and safe they could, they could still be well, they are, alive and safe. So together. if they are alive and safe, then it means we may not be dealing with just a kidnapper, but perhaps a, a serial, serial killer. killer. No, if they are if alive, they are alive no, then the, no, the if they the are bones. alive and, and safe, safe mm -hmm. then it means that we have four people who are dead, and then we have three who have been four who have been kidnapped. That that so three that, three that, that, that we have mean, three girls plus another person who this, whose body has been found. Yes, exactly. So that that would mean that you are trying to say that the one who killed is the same person who kidnapped, or perhaps two different people. Exactly. So then. Bringing in serial murder yes. at this, at this at point this in point. time is too premature. Really? Well, if you have the, multiple bones, I think the bones were of three different friend. bodies. Yes. So if we've, a fourth one was found in Inkrofo mm -hmm. at the cemetery, supposed old cemetery, yeah. then we have a case of serial killings. No. Why, no. why not ritual killing? <laughs> Because it's, it may be we, we, we for, probably for haven't purposes. seen the, the, the yeah. head of the, the, the admission mm. of the parts being used. So for now, we assume it's the murder. But then call, killing without the original killing, purpose. Calling it a serial killing. One, one person, one suspect. Yes. But we have not established that. Yes. How many bones were retrieved from Udotek's residence? Three. Three. Three, three. Mm -hmm. three, set, three bones. Belonging to from three his, different. From th that, that is enough to label the person you, as a no, suspected you are, serial. You, are, you, are, you, you may be labeling <laughs> Udotek to have committed, committed a, crime. a crime. Yes. But there is no link between, apart from the bones being uh, uh, at the premise where he, he lived. He lived. There is no link between him and the bones. But what, sh what, what is there not a possibility or, of linking to a gang? The, or the, a there team is, of... There is a possibility of even linking to Udotek. Mm -hmm. But that has not been that has established. Not been done yet. Uh, so, so, so it how is, would you establish that the it, possibility? Interrogation, interrogation. Inter well, once we discover that these bones are the girls' bones, then the next step is to link. Yeah. Even, even if, yeah, even see. if, I, even I, I am if, getting a little bit worried turns, with the interrogation bits because this is somebody who has led us running around the country. You see, me. There are so many ways um, in getting somebody to confess. You, strong interrogation, whatever. The bones, if the bones are found to be those of the ladies, me. One of the things that I would I would do. Sometimes I confront you with the dead body, and then you may break down. You may be you. Your anxiety may increase, and then you can Of course. Now, That's, now there are there are more scientific ways yeah. of doing it. If indeed the, the girls were found in that home. That home is a prime crime scene. Why was it not cordoned off right from the initial stage when Udotek was arrested? Because his house should be a crime scene as well. Exactly. His house is a bone of contention because then it means it was left open. So we are now implying that any other criminal could have used his premises for the purposes of burying someone else. Exactly. Yeah, you but, see? But, 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 just a but we have said that once he was arrested, these girls were linked to him. The police would ordinarily in, uh, go to the house to search, and yes. we don't expect to see much, because he would have done his homework well. If there were traces, he would have maybe uh, uh, tried to, to, to hide them. So at so, that so point, his house is not a restricted a area. It's it is a crime scene. It's, it's not always every crime scene that you expect to see some 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 physical traces. It's not always that. Okay. And you so can't you cannot hold a crime scene for for long too long a time. All right. You understand? Because that is a, somebody's private property. In in as much as you want to do your investigation, we, we couldn't the state couldn't have held that premise f uh, for twelve months. Okay. You understand? But this goes to say that whenever a crime occurs, crime scene investigation has to be paramount. Yeah. You understand? Uh, the police, the police, the curriculum for training detectives previously had very small portions of crime scene investigation. Okay. Fortunately now, it has been expanded. 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 I think previously it was about just two hours tutorials. So they collect evidence from this crime exactly. scene. Now, now uh, the collaboration between our department and the CID has expanded that curriculum to cover between three and six weeks of crime scene management and investigation. So the hope is that 
the police uh, CID personnel who will go through this training will now appreciate the essence of crime scene management and investigation. And hopefully, when there is another crime, they, they will do better than they have done so far. Okay. What advice would you suggest to the public, general public, where there are crimes? You know, something happens and then you find everybody rushing and walking in the areas and trying to... Yeah, it, it is the police that has to cordon sensitize. off. I mean, cordon off crime scenes. You know, crimes, we've been talking crimes in crimes. But crime scene actually is the central location of the crime and usually the starting point of any investigation, crime scene. And so if you are an investigator and you don't visit crime scene, you are not doing any meaningful investigation. So that is it. And it is the police that have to, to let the public know or sensitize the public that once we are here, please stay off. It's not anybody who hasn't got anything to do with the crime scene that has to be there. Even police responders, we have first responders who go to crime scene because they are not experts. They are yeah. not crime scene yes, experts. Yeah. They are not supposed to do anything with the crime scene. They only maintain crime scene protection yeah, for the professionals to oh. come and, in. And before, scene. even before the police, the first responder goes in there, it's, we, I think, as she was asking, the public will have to know that once you identify that a crime has occurred at a particular stay spot, away. you stay away. Call the police. And call the police Brilliant. quickly. Brilliant you, there, is, there is always time, uh, we have seen uh, periods where you see somebody, a crime occurs, somebody is dead, uh, people turn the body mm -hmm. anyhow. Yeah. By the time the aspects get there, the body has been moved. Reconstructing what happened to know exactly the, the process that went on there becomes a problem. Yeah. So stay away from the crime scene unless you're going there will save a life yeah. or property. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming through to give us insight into um, this particular issue. Thank you, Dr. Richmond Fuakwa, Department of Forensic Science, University of Cape Coast, as well as former CID boss, um, COP Bright Woodrow. Thank you. Thank you. We are in a technology era. Exploring security apps to track our children is coming up next on Captured by Women. Stay with us. Welcome back from the break. I'm Elizabeth. In this era, where the conversation is all about kidnapping and abductions, parents are insecure about the safety of their children. They want to know where they are at each point in time, when they're getting back home, uh, what is happening at uh, each point. In this era of technology, we have tracking apps that can do this. Joining us today is Mr. Maximus Ametogo. He is the Chief Digital Lead of Popout, an app developer, digital marketing strategist, and a social media coach. Maximus, you're welcome to thank Captured by much. Women. All right, thank you. Pleasure. What are some of the available apps we can look at? Yeah, we have a couple of them. So we have uh, Spice G, my, uh, uh, they have the ones that you can install, some of them have security implications. So I can't name them okay, on, all on right. that because you, you don't, you, you you can't just use it to track kids, but you can use it to track any other person. So you have software that you can install on people's phones, all or right. you have the one that has radio signals that you can okay. you can either put it in their bag or put it on their. Uh, a bracelet that they are wearing. So all we have right. all these tracking devices all that right. even the one that people use to walk or run to measure yeah. their pulses and yeah, also track Fitbit like and the yeah. rest. So all, right. all these are all part of the the tracking devices that you can use. Wouldn't uh, that be an infringement on the privacy of the child? Of course. So there must be consent, and of course. Uh, for the safety of the child. Consent of the child. The child under no, 18 years. When we, when we talk about right. apps, we talk about consent. So the consent right. can be deferred consent. So the parent, because I'm protecting my child, All then right. I can track the child. Okay. Right. So because there are various phases where even posting your child's photograph, for example, on social media without their consent is also an infringement of their right. It's just like sleeping with a below 16-year-old girl, whether with consent or not, is rape, is yes. defilement. Yes. So you don't even need 
uh, their consent to do that. So if you come to the spying app or tracking, I will not say spying, but because just to track, to locate where your child is, we have various uh, applications that you can use. So ones that they can embed either on their bracelet or watch or a shoe or a bag that they can do. Uh, but how foolproof is this if I'm using a tracking device? Yeah, so the ones, the ones that you've mentioned so far are not things that the person can't remove and throw away. Yeah, so they are wearables, but the implant, right? So the implant is where you can implant the thing to the body, yeah. which, of course, there's a medical implication. There's also a regulatory uh, arrangements or protocols that you must follow before you can even do that. You That's need, the chip. Yeah, Putting so the chip in the, the person. Skin. Okay. Exactly. So. It becomes more of a police state because if the country can't, the family, community, or the country can't protect the individual, you have to keep the person to monitor their movement, then you are not living in a secured environment, really. So there's all that, when you, when you talk about uh, technology, there's a physical aspect of it, right? Are you tracking the child to know where the body is or you know whether they are alive or not? or where the bag is, or the bracelet is, or where or the they are. the movement of the child. Yes, so the movement of the child. So those are some of the things that you look out for, because if you can chip a child, and the child can still be kidnapped, maybe the time that you are not online, because you will not be online monitoring your child in real time. There are some apps that you can even do what they call geofencing, as in yeah. restricting the area within which the child can move. So if they go beyond that, you An get a notification. Right, so those are available in other countries. You go to maybe even some beaches, they have that uh, apps that you can wear, uh, bracelets that bracelets. you can wear on your child. So if they move a certain distance, you get a notification on your phone that your child is moving beyond okay. a certain distance. Looking at the bracelet, what will be the costs of such uh, a device? It, it varies. You know, sometimes you can buy a, a bracelet for maybe a ten dollars, but you can subscribe to the app for four hundred and ninety dollars a year, or hundred dollars a year, depending on the features that you want on the app. So are these oh. apps? Sorry, are these apps available locally? Some are, but others are jurisdictional. They they are they are regulated within countries that have certain laws that protect the the subjects of the apps, as in the kit that is going to, you are going to uh, what you call, put the bracelet on, or the parents who is also managing that system, and even the app companies, their level of security and all that, because they can also equally track you, the, the customer, to know where you are, and they can also, somebody can also hack into their system and know where every child is or closer. So what are the them. regulations pertaining to this? So, the usual is the privacy, data privacy, data protection regulations. We have some in Ghana, not fully developed. But uh, the challenge is the infra infrastructure setup. So the telecom uh, infrastructure setup is there, but we've not plugged that, that kind of security into that system. So that when you are moving, a particular telecom company can signal that this person is moving beyond a certain physical or demarcated area so you can trigger uh, It's like Big elect. Brother is watching you. Exactly. Are we getting to that point <laughs> where it's likely that we should, or th 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 there will be a recommendation for this kind of uh, regulation? In fact, other countries are living there in decades. Other countries are already there where they, are, they monitor everybody. Yes. In some countries, by the time you walk from your house to your work and back, you've been recorded I, by I, 300 I believe even our CCTV cameras. Our yeah, smartphones so are already, you sign in, you log into your email accounts, your location services, exactly. they know exactly where you are All your social media from. handles. All your handles, Even, yeah. You know, anytime you take a picture, okay, the, the picture has the location stamp. Yes, of exactly where you took it. Exactly, so when you take a picture here, the location stamp is on the picture, but usually we don't know that. So there are disadvantages so, of these technology apps it, as well. Is it well. a disadvantage? <laughs> <laughs> because we are talking about the, the tracking. So you can off, you, of course, you can off the location. Turn it off, okay. Turn it off, but some are default. You can't change anything about that. Because the, the cell site of a telecom infrastructure needs to know where your SIM card is located so they can communicate and hand over calls when somebody is calling you from wh wherever location. So as for tracking where you are, your SIM card, that one is default. They know where you are, yes. where your phone is. Are the tracking uh, apps uh, very popular in Ghana? They are, not, they are not 
popular to track kids, but they are popular to track vehicles and yes. and uh, motorbikes, of course, motorbikes and the rest. So they, some have advanced uh, what they call it, features where you can even stop a vehicle. From you know, you can stop the engine. Yeah. Know where they are located. The even know the some of the levels. vehicles have this, these exactly. devices. Exactly. So what is going to happen is that any device in the future, because we're talking about Internet of Things, everything will be trackable. Everything will have a, a, a GPS uh, inbuilt in it. So some cars will come with GPS. Even cameras will come with GPS. Phones already have GPS. Fridges to come with GPS so they know the location of the fridge and all that. So it's default because devices need to communicate and then people don't, must know where a particular device is so they can track the location. For example, if you have a fridge where they know maybe the amount of tomatoes in the fridge, you know, there are smart fridges now that can even calculate the amount of uh, tomatoes in the fridge and trigger an order on an e-commerce website for you. So the e-commerce website needs to know the distance between them and the fridge to be able to even calculate yeah. the time that they can bring <laughs> you the device. So there's that, you know, dilemma, whether to do it or not to do it because yeah. convenience is, is, is a key. Well, that, that's very interesting because it looks like we are now beginning to rely heavily on devices rather than the human interaction. Um, looking at the apps and all that, would you recommend rather that we use the apps than sensitize the children? I will always go for the human connection first, right? So yeah. if the human intelligence or setup is not there, technology will mess you up because technology is developed by human beings. It can be manipulated by human beings too as well. It's just like saying, okay, we are protecting maybe our office from people stealing our password. So you put all these swipes the uh, cards at the door. Meanwhile, somebody in the office has a password that they can give to an external person to enter. Yes. So if you don't deal with this, uh, the human factor, the yes. psychology of the human being first, you will not have security from the, uh, from the technology space. So we have to educate children about how they interact with people, if they meet new people, how they must deal with them stranger if danger. stranger is asking you for a phone number you must not give your phone number or give your dad's phone number to the stranger if they ask you for your location you have no right to give your location because nobody has a right to ask you where you are or where do you live for example they don't have that right to to do that so you must educate children about that don't say even don't give your actual name to people don't tell them where you are located. When don't tell them your phone number. Yeah. You know, if they have those information, that's what they use the social engineering stuff. They can use the same information against your parents or vice versa, right? So you have to be very careful about that. Effective information, parenting comes in place. Exactly. Yeah. People sharing pictures of their children on social media. That is a no no. It is I a no no. Always, I always uh, tell but parents people. are so guilty of this. Yeah. You and know, it's, it's probably lack of education on exactly. that aspect. In, I think Australia or France, there are some issues where some uh, parents shared the, uh, the pictures of their children in diaper and the rest. And then when the child became 18, they sued their parents. They sued their parents. Yeah. So, so. Exactly. They are infringing <laughs> on, the, on the, the, the child's privacy. You are supposed to protect the child's privacy. So if, if you take a picture of your child in diaper with powder on him, you think yes. it's funny. Yeah, what about if your child also had access to social media and took a picture of you whilst you were sleeping naked? <laughs> then look at my mom or my dad, she's sleeping and she's snoring and shares it on the social media page without your consent. Yeah. yeah. So it's the same thing. So you have to, because anytime you put a child's photograph online, you are documenting the child. You are exposing yes. the child to the world. You are you are building their school, digital footprint yeah, without their permission. Without their permission. And a lot of parents are guilty of this in the fact that they even take pictures of their school uniforms. They know where they are. Exactly. They know where they live, where they go, church they attend, the playgrounds they go to. Every and time. it's too much exposure. So exactly. there's this, um, the social media friendly people must have that education first and be more cautious about their personal security. Very important. And you see, yeah. the other aside is that in our part of the world, we tend to accept friend requests even if you don't know the people physically. That's, and that's a challenge because 
in other countries, people connect with friends they know on social media. So if I don't know, I won't accept your friend request. So the people on my social media are my circle of friends. So even if I share a picture of my child at the pool side or the rest, it's Perfectly just a family understood. cycle. Yeah. So there's no external person. Now even my lambs are sending requests. Oh my goodness. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> you have all that. So you have to be very careful. The friends you make, the friend requests that you accept on Facebook and even the so other social media channels yeah. to yeah. be able to protect your child. Because if you introduce a person into that space, any content you share, they have access to it. Is it possible as well with the tracking app to set, um, educate the children such that they can trigger an alarm um, to the parents that someone has ad abducted me. Can something yeah. in that vein be developed in the wristwatch, in the bracelet? Press a button, I need help. Instead yeah, so of a phone, because not every child has a mobile phone. Exactly, so that one is a situational thing. So if, if there are some apps that are like a panic button apps, apps that they can be on their phone or the, on the bracelet that they press. There are some bracelets that is just for, for that. So you don't use it to make any call, you don't use it to do anything. Yeah. If there's okay. an issue, just emergency, you just press it and the, the people will be signaled or they'll be alerted. So that service is there. Like you said, um, effective parenting, teaching about stranger danger, yeah. personal safety, security, these are all things we should employ in addition to exploring the options of technology. Exactly. Maximus, it's been great. Thank you Thank for you joining for us on pleasure. Captured by Women. All right. We'll Thank be back you. from the break. So Matilda, what has been your high points for today during all our discussions? <laughs> Very interesting. I have a feeling that we need to expedite action on investigating and coming out with something on um, concrete for the families to at least know exactly the status of their children, whether the remains that were found were theirs or not. Because I think as the day goes by, it becomes more traumatizing for me. And that's one of the things that, and then perhaps we should take these missing persons reports seriously than we do. Yeah. Because once, most of the time you take it, they will tell you, oh, the, perhaps just go home, the person would come and all that. And if we had taken it more seriously, then we, we wouldn't have reached where we are maybe now, yeah. or we would, have, we would have solved the case long time ago. Yeah. It's, it is indeed a burning issue. And the fact that um, detectives are trained on crime scene investigations and their training only about two to three weeks, it's now currently been expanded. But some of this then boils down to why there has been so much uh, non-seriousness to the level of investigations done. Um, they've done a great disservice to the families of these girls because they've been hammering on this and calling out, where are our girls, please do something. And to be reliant, so reliant on the suspect um, brings the police in a bad light. They should have done more diverse investigations towards getting to this point where they are now checking the septic tank of the supposed uh, accused person. Well, maybe the police also should learn to communicate a lot more. Yeah. yeah communicate yeah. a lot more because if you're not communicating, it makes the... And communicate the, the, to the script. Because you can't come out and say that, oh, we know where the girls are, they are safe, keep on keeping on, hold faith, we have seen them, we have sighted them, we'll come back home soon. All of a sudden, then we are looking for bones. Mm -hmm. No, something went wrong. They, they have to, their communication should be very comprehensive. For instance, I, I, I had a feeling that you should, we should have spoken with the family, alerted them that we've gotten a tip of, Which is true. Or, or even done that uh, hand in hand, whilst they, they, they were at the scene. It's true. They could have sent a family, uh, someone to the family to speak with them, so that whatever you find, you, you, yeah. you, you just are prepared. Communication. You know, yes, yes, it, yes, it yes, will yes. prepare the family, it will prepare us as a nation. We've had almost a week 
uh, since these uh, bones, were, bones found. were or remains were found, and yet we haven't heard anything from there's them. No, there's no timeline. So I, sitting here, have a problem. Imagine the family, the mother, the father, the sisters, or the brothers, or even uncles who have had to look after these children. Imagine the trauma, the, the pain that they are going through. We should learn to put speed on things that are relevant. And yeah. people who are in uh, positions of accountability should know that it is not just because you've been put there, but we should work with a certain passion mm -hmm. so that it is easier for us to get results when yeah. we look for it. I hope the lapses that they have um, seen, they are going to make remedial measures to them and this kind of sloppy investigation does not happen again. But then the other one that I, I, I what uh, the high point of the tracking apps yes. for me, it's more of training our children. Okay. Uh, we, we things are changing. Yeah. I mean the times when you walk out of the house and an auntie will call you and ask where are you going or somebody will say I saw your child this uh, going here. Oh, and you, you would even go somewhere and come back home and then your parents would say, oh, we, we've been told you went here and here and here. So you were being tracked. Yes. Now That those, era has changed. Yes. We have closed ourselves up in walls and... Uh, and now we talk more of the nuclear family than a community yeah, than or a community. an extended family. So we have to now also as parents begin to educate the children for them to know who to open up to, who not to open up to. Of course, the only person you can open up to will be your parents. Because even in rape cases or any other cases, crime cases related to children are often uh, perpetuated by people they know, not yeah, people they don't which know. Which is correct. So we, we need to re-examine our security measures. <laughs> Putting digital chips in our children will be way too extreme. It's way too extreme. <laughs> I, I, I think it's paranoid. Uh, it won't be bad for tracking their husbands, though. <laughs> That is interesting. I, know, right? I, I, I have a feeling that you would be opting for something like that. Let's just see. Oh. <laughs> Viewers, this is another edition of Captured by Women. It was proudly presented to you at the venue, Emerald Suites, and sponsored by Woodin Le Createur. Join us same time next week on Captured by Women.